So having looked at the core position, rotation versus weight back, it's time to think about corners. There's lots of really good advice out there about corners and obviously Paramount is looking through the things to where you do want to be next. Perhaps one of the most misunderstood and misconstrued tips on cornering is the lunge of the weight forward into the corner. It is desirable that we transfer our weight from front to back through a corner, but just lunging forward and forgetting that it's part of a pumping process where we want to pump energy through the bike can lead to issues. Let's watch Josh come through at a decent speed, then we'll get him to come through at a slower speed so we can take a look at what the dynamics of what's going on and why just thinking about loading the front wheel on the way in sometimes leads people to forgetting to getting the benefit of then transferring the weight and a little bit of rearward motion and a transfer of weight towards the rear of the bike and the rear tyre as we come through the corner to get that full pump. So as we look at that frame by frame, or certainly in a bit more slow motion, we can see the dynamics of what's going on. Just to repeat, it ain't wrong to start to think about getting some extra force through the front wheel as you enter a corner, but think about it as more as a result of applying good technique than just shoving your weight forward with gay abandon or any other sort. So pushing the bike over with his hands as he comes into the corner and pedaling over the front of the pedal stroke and down, pedaling forwards to drop his outside foot, Josh, by virtue of doing that, is loading the front of the bike. You can see as he enters the corner, very subtle shift of the weight forward but the push into the front, the forks compress, the tires are going to widen slightly, they're going to find more grip. But what's important is what happens next. He doesn't just sit there hanging over the front of the bike with the back end being dragged down the trail. He transfers his weight and pumps through the corner. Having used good technique, tip the bike over, drop the outside pedal by pedaling forwards. Josh compresses into the center of the bike and as he comes through the corner, starts to extend up and back, driving slightly rearward on the back and putting the emphasis on the rear tyre and at this point the front work of the tyre has done its work and he's driving the rear tyre around the corner. If you think about how you dip a, a pump or dip in the trail or a bomb hole you don't simply smash your weight over the front and stay there it's about the rotation through the bike and using your mass to drive the bike through the section and a bomb hole is just a berm on a different axis flip it onto its side you've got yourself a berm front wheel in back wheel out Quite often you'll see pro riders, fast riders, manualing as they come out of a berm. It's not all for looks, it's because they've transferred and pumped their way through the corner. And if you want to get speed, grip and acceleration through a corner, pumping is essential. And it's not all about diving on the front and preloading the front, but transferring the weight and driving energy through the bike. Now we're going to move on to one of the, perhaps the most dangerous sound bites you'll ever hear in mountain bike skills. It pertains to jumping and often drop-offs, which is pull up hard at the lip. This is probably the worst advice you can ever respond to. Now, a number of different variations of what can go wrong are out there, depending on how you've moved your body mass, but pulling up hard is a definite, definite no-no. Quite the opposite, in fact, we're gonna push hard into the bike and through the bike. But certainly, we're not gonna pull up. Let's just watch Josh clear this little gap and then we'll slow it down and see what happens. He's not going to pull up as a demonstration. It's too risky and he don't want to do it. And I need him in one piece. So as Josh comes in towards the jump, he's actually compressing, pushing into the bike. And he continues that push through the lip, extending up and back slightly, pushing the bike out ahead of him, accelerating the bike through the lip. He's far from pulling up, but pushing through. That drive accelerates the bike through the lip, gives some lift and some rise in the air. As we talked about, the toes drop slightly, the body mass centers up, ready to push back into the landing. There is no pulling involved, it's all about pushing. So having pushed through the takeoff rather than pulling up at the lip, Josh is now airborne. He's got plenty of uh, momentum on the bike, he's accelerated the bike, he's got some good height, he's definitely gonna make the, the, the gap and clear the gap okay. Got to avoid pulling whilst in the air as well. One of two things can happen if you pull in the air. If you're pushed through the bike and you pull, the pedals are gonna act as a pivot point 
and you're going to loop out. The front of the bike is going to rise really rapidly. There's nothing under the back tyre stopping it rotating. So if you've shifted your weight slightly rear of centre and pull, you're going to land on your back wheel if you're lucky or straight on your ass if you're not. The other option or the other problem is if you are dead sailoring in the air and you've just frozen in the air and then you decide to pull to try and make the extra distance to get the, over the gap. As you pull, yes the front will arise but also your body will be rotated forwards. That will cause forward rotation of the bike, a heavy front wheel landing at best or a face plant at worst. Either way, pulling when mid-air, not a good idea. So at the lip rather than pulling, Josh has pushed. And now he's in the air, we can see that he's just allowing the bike to rise up by softening. He's dropped his toes slightly, which is rotating his mass slightly more to the centre of the bike. And as he does so, he's softening his arms and legs, but very definitely not pulling up on the bars or trying to hook the bike up with his feet. He's now ready in this position, with soft arms and soft legs, to extend and push through into the landing. And therefore he's going to soften his landing, accelerate the bike uh, at the right time, and his body mass isn't going to accelerate on landing over and above the bike as it hits the ground, bites a bit and stalls fractionally. His mass is actually going to drive the bike through the landing phase. Spot your landing. Another piece of advice offered very freely when it comes to jumps and drops. Yes, we want to know where the landing zone is, but if we fixate on that landing point, we're likely to rota cause rotation in the air and very quickly the ground will be rushing towards us as we stare and target fixate on our landing spot. I want to know where my landing zone is, but I want to look through it to the next section. There is something going to happen very quickly after I land, and that is me carrying on down the trail. If I spot the landing and stare at it, I will rotate, land heavy, chances are. If I do stay on the bike and then lift my head up, there's a hell of a lot of things coming on and happening quite quickly, which I'm not going to have time to react to. So look through sections. It's another form of section. Don't just stare at a single point in it. Don't get target fixation. Look through it.